and begin the recording. Okay, so again, good morning, everyone. My name is Brad Bestick. Today's webinar, we are focusing on the introduction to the Schedule Star platform. So what we're going to discuss mainly are really four separate items. We're gonna start with the views up at the top, then we're gonna to transition to talk about the directories, followed by how to schedule your two different types of sporting events, and then we're gonna finish up with some reporting. Okay, so it's, it's gonna be a quick one. I know we're slated for an hour. This is gonna take the walkthrough about 20 minutes or so. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rolling. Where we always start are these three different views up at the top. We have the calendar, the by sport, and what we refer to as the notifications. So with the calendar, probably the easiest tab of the three, this is going to allow you to pick a specific date and then view all of the information for that day, okay? Any date highlighted in yellow means there is at least one event scheduled on that date, okay? If you wanna jump month to month, just simply click the single arrows on the inside. If you would like to jump year to year, simply click the double arrows on the outside of the calendar, okay? So easy enough with the calendar. Let's talk about the buy sport, a little bit different here. This allows you to target one specific team and view all of their schedules for a given school year. So keep in mind, we are on April 2020. So that means it's gonna default the school year of 1920. So once I select my team, boys varsity baseball, it's going to show me all of the games, practices, just any events entered in for that specific team for that school year. If you want to jump year to year, season to season, just simply use the double arrows. This will take us out to 2021 20, school year. And then if I double arrow back, it'll take us back to 1920. There we go. This is also the tab where you can print out a quick schedule for a specific team. So let's say your boys varsity baseball coach reaches out to you. They want a quick PDF of their schedule. Simply click that print schedule button and it'll give you a nice team specific schedule that you can see right here. Now we're gonna take a detour for a second and take a look at this report. You're gonna notice up at the top, you do have the ability to maintain some personnel on your reporting. So I do wanna show you how to do that because it just adds a nice custom touch to your reporting. So in order to do that, you simply go to settings, school profile. Once we get into this screen, you're going to see a number of different options. So up at the top, it's gonna to show you your upcoming renewal date and then what your plan type is. Next, you're gonna be able to maintain school contacts. So you have your athletic director, your principal. The next field is where you can go ahead and set those reporting options. So you have three options for job title and name. So as you can see, they're fully customized. You can enter in whatever you would like there. And then closing out the screen, you'll see at the bottom the ability to maintain your address and phone number, okay? So it's always good to know you have that customization within the platform. So again, to access it, settings, school profile. All right, let's jump out and talk about the last viewing tab, which is notifications. Now the notifications tab is consisted of two sub tabs. We have the athletic director and we have the league central. We're actually gonna start with the league central. So if you are not familiar, league central is our league scheduling platform where you are able to grant access to one individual or multiple to schedule your league events that'll then feed into the individual school schedule star programs, okay? Some leagues use it, some don't. That's really a matter of preference. I, I'm going to assume, um, Jamie, I know you are part of West Virginia that has recently come on board. Uh, no one's using League Central there yet. Uh, Amanda and Brian, I know you guys are part of a, a Catholic private school. Um, 
I don't believe from looking at your account that you guys utilize League Central either. So that's something you can kind of disregard for now. Now, the athletic director tab is definitely something we want to talk about a little bit. So in the athletic director tab, you're going to notice right now, we have no notifications. Now, if you sign into your system, you probably see a little dot in the upper right. It's a red dot with some number in it. That's gonna tell you how many notifications are in your system. And then once you click on notifications under the athletic director tab, you'll probably see a whole bunch of events. These are events that your opponents who use Schedule Star have scheduled with your school, okay? So you have two options of what you can do with these events. The first option is you can accept the events to carry into your calendar. Now, you can do that if you don't have the game scheduled. I say that because if you already have the game scheduled and you accept the notification, it will cause a duplicate on your schedule. So for that reason alone, my suggestion would be not to accept notifications, okay? That way you don't have to comb through your schedules. Your other option is you can decline notifications. That's basically just going to clear them out. That way you can keep doing your thing with scheduling your events and not worrying based on what your opponents have scheduled, okay? So you'll see if events are scheduled, you have the ability to highlight all of them, click actions and either accept or decline. All right, we are done talking about the view tabs. Let's transition, start talking about the directories. So we're gonna start with opponents. So this will probably sound like a no brainer, but you obviously cannot schedule any of your games unless you have opponents in your database. So what we're gonna see here in our test account, these are all of the opponents that we can schedule contests with. If we want to add to this list, we simply click the add opponent button and it'll take us into this screen here, okay? So on this screen, you have the ability to type a school name. So if I just type my school name, Vincentian, and hit search, you'll see it auto-populates the school right away. So I can simply click the school, add selected, they're now in my listing or I can go ahead and select by state. And this is what the majority of our customers do. They'll select the state of the opponent. It'll then provide you with a listing of all the schools we have in our database for that state. So at this point, you would just simply go through the list, find the school you're looking for, hit add selected. Now, let's say you're going through this list. The school you're looking for is not here. All you would have to do is click request new. This will then give you the ability to send us the name, address, city, state, and zip. You would type in that information, hit submit, and it'll then send our team that request, okay? So pretty basic with the opponents. So let's talk about officials and game help, okay? Officials and game help, these two tabs work about the same, okay? So if I click on officials, in order to add an official in your database, you simply click the add in the upper right-hand corner. The only two pieces of information you need in order to input an official is the first and last name, okay? You'll see everything else is optional. However, it is my suggestion that you begin entering in an email address if you choose to maintain your officials and game help workers. The reason I say that is there is a feature in Schedule Star where you can start to send out automatic game reminders to your opponents. So if you wanted to turn on the automatic reminders, you would simply go to Utilities, Reminders, and you'll see they can be set up for opponents, officials, game help, and even your modes of transportation that we'll talk about in just a couple minutes. So within the reminders here, you'll see you can set up to four rounds, the earliest being a month prior to a contest, one week before, one day before, and even the day of. I would say the most common settings are one week before, one day before, 
but ultimately it would be up to you. So you would simply set the frequency here, hit save, and would never have to come back in here unless you wanted to adjust. Let's jump back to game help. Like I had said, very similar to officials in terms of getting them entered in and even information you can maintain. So once I hit add, you'll see first and last name only required. And then you do have the ability to enter in that email. Let's talk about facilities. So in Schedule Star, I believe that maintaining facilities properly is one of the more important things you should do because it can possibly eliminate a lot of headaches in terms of your public. Okay, here's what I mean by that. In Schedule Star, maintain your home and away facilities. You'll see you have the option to add an address for your facilities. If you are not doing so, I strongly suggest you start. So you'll notice when you hit add, you can only maintain a name and then the address information, okay? So if this is a newer tab for you and you don't have a comprehensive list, then get in the habit of entering them in with the valid address. Because once a facility is assigned to a contest, when your parents go to view the information out on your big team's fan central website, they can click on the facility name and it'll route them to Google Maps where they can get their own directions, thus eliminating some of those annoying phone calls, emails, social media DMs, whatever it might be, okay? The next tab is transportation, very similar to facilities, but this is where you're able to input your types of transportation. So you'll see here from our listing, we have mini bus, school bus, van, so you can really name it whatever you would like. So in the upper right hand corner, we simply hit the add button. You will see the only requirement is just the name of the transportation, okay? Now again, since transportation is tied to the game reminders, if you want to make sure they're being used, simply enter in an email for that mode of transportation. Next, we're going to talk about students and we're going to talk about the Teams tab because those work hand in hand. Okay, there are two ways you can input students into Schedule Star. The first way is manually. So hit the ad in the upper right and you'll see the requirements first, last, male or female, grad year. Okay, now I'm going to be honest, I don't know really any customers off the top of my head that are manually inputting students. Because the second way you can get them input is through what we call our student data import. If you are not familiar with that, basically we take an Excel file and we have the ability to mass upload your student data information into your program for you. We have specific column headers already defined that you would just paste in, send to our customer support team, and they would import into the system for you. Instructions on how that work can be found through our support tab here. You would just simply click on support help pages, and then within that queue, type in student import, and you would be able to find what you need to get your students imported, okay? Since we're talking about students, we have to talk about the Teams tab because this is where you go to build your rosters once your students are in Schedule Star. So how this works, you simply select your school year, season, gender, level, sport. So if I go ahead and select winter, boys, varsity, basketball, it's either gonna show you no participants or the roster that has been built within the platform, okay? Since there are no participants, if we would like to add student athletes to the roster, simply hit add in the upper right hand corner. It'll then show you your listing where you can just simply click on students and add them to the roster. Once your rosters are built, you then have the option to access a number of different reports within this platform. Simply click on reports at the bottom, it'll take you into this team report screen where just to highlight some of these, you can print rosters, eligibility, contact reports, awards, certificates, and what we refer to as the tournament report. 
So a number of different student options and reports available. Coaches can be maintained in Schedule Star. So in order to get them entered in, add in the upper right hand corner, the only requirements being first and last name. Now within the coaches database, you are able to assign them to the specific teams they coach, and you can also track up to nine certifications for each coach. If you would like to set the certifications, you are able to do so. Simply click on settings, scroll down, coach certifications, and you will see the nine boxes that you can name whatever you would like. So again, to access this, simply go to settings, scroll down, coach certifications. The final directory here is commerce. The easiest description for this tab is it's an electronic moment. So if there's any additional information you would want to house within Schedule Star, maybe it is some companies that help you with apparel or equipment, or they help you cater some of your specific events, or even other technology providers that assist the athletic department. You can maintain those listings in Schedule Star under the Commerce tab. The only requirement is just the company name, but you'll see there are some additional fields you would be able to maintain. Okay, so we are done with the views. We are done discussing introduction to the directories. So what we wanna talk about now are the two different types of sporting events that you can enter into Schedule Star. okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the calendar view for a second. And I'm then going to jump a couple years down the road so I can input some mock events here, okay? So there are two different types of sporting events you can maintain in Schedule Star. There are head-to-head -head contests and there are what we refer to as meets. I'm going to schedule one of each on the same date so you can see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add event and it's gonna take me into the add event screen where you are always defaulted to scheduling a sporting event, specifically head to head. So with the head to head events, here are the requirements. First, you need your specific team. So for this example, I'm going to say boys varsity basketball. Next, you want to make sure you have the correct event date, which I know because I clicked it on the mini calendar. Next, we want to set our start time. We have hour, minute, a.m., p.m., but this is also where TBA is, okay? So for this example, I'm going to say this varsity basketball contest begins at 730. Next, we want to set our home and away. So location, we will select home. And then finally, add our opponent. So I click add opponent. I then hit the drop down, And this is where I see my listing of all of the opponents in my database. So for this example, we're going to play B test school at home. And then I hit save. OK, so what we are seeing here, there is a feature built in the Schedule Star called the Game Wizard. This is a shortcut to scheduling that basically allows sub-level games to be scheduled automatically based off of a primary level. If you are not familiar with this feature, it is not something we cover in the introductory course, okay? So what you can do is visit our help pages or even go out to our YouTube page where we have a video that'll walk you through step-by-step -step how this works. So what I'm gonna do in this instance here, I do not want these events to schedule. So I'm going to uncheck add game, hit OK, and you'll notice it automatically schedules my game, okay? Now, because of that game wizard being created, you will notice it automatically assigned a facility for this team, okay? Typically, you have to go through and assign the facilities individually, but because of this rule being set up, for every boys varsity basketball contest, auditorium is going to auto assign for the facility for home games, okay? That is how you schedule a head-to-head -head contest. Let's go ahead and schedule a meet. So first thing we have to do is change the event type to, to meet. 
And next, we're going to notice some of the requirements for this event type are different. So up at the top, we still need to pick our gender level in sport. So I'm going to say co-ed, varsity, track. Next, I want to set my event title. So for this instance, I'm going to just put test event title. Next, we need our date. We know that's correct. We're going to set our start time. I'm going to say 3 p.m. Now, the last difference is you have to maintain one host and at least two participants. So basically, there has to be at least three schools listed here. So I'm going to click Add Participants. I'm going to add B Test School and also C Test School. Now, if you are not hosting this meet event, here's what you do. You're going to select the school that is, and then next to location, you're going to make them the host. That way, once you save the contest, it'll display in red as an away event. Now, at a glance, under the calendar or by sport tab, you can easily tell the difference between head-to-head -head and meet events, just simply based off of the opponent. So anytime you schedule a meet, you will see multiple opponents is listed as the opponent. Just simply hover over it and it'll show you all of the schools aside. So those are the two different types of sporting events that you can enter into Schedule Star. Now the final topic that we want to cover in this introductory course here are some basic reports that you can generate, okay? So I'm gonna jump back to the current date range of April, 2020. And I'm just gonna walk you through four or five of the most popular reports within Schedule Star just to get you rolling. So up at the top, the first report I showed you was the by sport report, which is a great one. A lot of schools take advantage of that. But now we're gonna click on basic reporting and then event reports. We're gonna start with a monthly calendar, okay? So let's pretend we wanna print a monthly calendar for April, 2020. So what I'm doing right now is I'm setting my day range and let's pretend we only want the games. So down here for include these events, I would uncheck everything except sports. Next, you have the ability to select from two different calendar options, and I'm gonna show you both. The first is the monthly schedule. So I selected monthly, I hit print, and now it's gonna generate the report. And here's the monthly option, okay? Now you'll notice that this one can be pretty hard to read, okay? At a glance, you can't really tell the difference between home and away events. Uh, additionally, in our test account, you can see we have a lot of events scheduled. So in this case, what I would do instead is generate a color report large monthly. So once this generates, you're gonna see a difference right away. So at a glance, since the events are in red and blue, home and away, you can now easily tell the difference between home and away contest. Additionally, when you select the large monthly, it's going to make the print of the games a little bit bigger and easier to read, okay? So those are your two different monthly schedule reporting options. You have the regular monthly and the large monthly, okay? Next, let's talk about if you want to print a season's worth of individual schedules. So let's say, for example, your date range is 3-1-2020 to let's say 5-15-2020. And you wanna print, maybe that's the length of your spring season. So under team schedule, what I would do, again, I just want my games. So I'm gonna do team schedule and then hit print. So this team schedule here, it's gonna break down all of your teams individually and then list the specific events, okay, chronologically below. So it starts with baseball, boys varsity, and it shows you all the games. Then it'll adjust to boys JV, so on and so forth, okay? Now, 
What I typically do is I will run this as an alternate report. And basically what this is going to do is give you that by sport tab report, but for multiple teams. So here's boys varsity baseball, individual schedule. Here's JV right after, individual schedule, so on and so forth. I just think it's a cleaner looking schedule, especially if you were someone that likes to hand or distribute out schedules for specific teams or even hang individual schedules throughout the school. This is a good reporting option for you. The next report I want to show you is what we call the master schedule spreadsheet. So for this report, I typically generate it for maybe a week or so. So I'm going to set the day range 4-1 of 2020 to 4-8-2020. Maybe you are in a position where you have to share information with other admin members at your school. Maybe it's facility usage or transportation being assigned. This master schedule spreadsheet report is a good report for you. So here's what I do. I set my day range for the week. Again, just targeting sporting events, spreadsheet report, and then print notes into part time. Then I hit print. And here is what the report will look like. Now, as you'll notice, it's going to show you a lot of information. So in the first half, you'll notice all that detail. De I'm sorry, default info regarding the date, the day, gender level, sport, start times, opponents. And then in that back half is where you'll get to that specific event information, such as facilities, transportation, the part dismissals, and even some schools do like to enter in return and notes on individual events. Okay, so this is a good report. Now, if you wanted to run it specifically for transportation purposes, my suggestion would be take it a step further and do away events only, then hit print. Because you're probably only assigning transportation to away contests, so it'll just condense the report a little bit more for you, okay? The last basic report I wanna show you is what we refer to as the opponent schedule. Let's say, for example, it's summertime, a school keeps contacting you about wanting a comprehensive list of every event you are playing them for the upcoming school year. So what you could do, set your date range 8-1-2020, 6-15-2021, 20, opponent schedule, I want both home and away, sporting events, hit print. So this report is going to show you a breakdown of all of your opponents alphabetically and then chronologically the events you are playing them in that date range. Okay, so let's say for example, B test school is the one that is reaching out to me. So rather than have this report of every opponent, I could just simply filter down to B test school only and hit print. So those are the basic reports you can generate within Schedule Star. Under report type, you will notice there are a number of different options there. Uh, additionally, hundreds of different combos. So feel free to always go in here and kind of mix and match and see if there's something I didn't even cover that'll work best for your school. Now where I typically finish up here with the introduction is just mentioning our wonderful customer support team. So whether you are a user that's been with us for years or you're brand new, uh, it's always good to know that we have a number of different resources available to assist you with the platform. So obviously you are participating in a webinar where we did the introduction here, but you can also go on the left-hand tab and visit our support section, okay? So under contact us, you will be able to see uh, contact information, emails, phone numbers. But the help pages is really what I want to draw your attention to. Everything you could want to do in Schedule Star or your Fan Central website, there is a how to guide on here, okay? And it's very user friendly. So I had mentioned earlier regarding the student data import. If you're interested in that, just simply type in import 
and you'll see the first option importing students to schedule stock and that'll be the case for a lot of different features you would want to take advantage of okay additionally the email address for our support team it is support at bigteams.com so that is the conclusion of the introduction here so if there are any questions feel free to ask away.